I've been tweaking my home office and productivity desk setup for several years. And I think I've finally found the perfect work from home setup for a software engineer and content creator. And I'm going to go into all the details in this video. If you're interested in purchasing any of these items, I'm going to drop links to them in the description. And most of them will probably be affiliate links if that's something you care about. For the desk, I'm rocking fully Jarvis electric standing desk legs in the alloy finish. They look awesome. I got the three stage low version so that I can drop this lower than normal since I tend to sit low in my chair and I like shorter desks when chilling in a seated position. It has four customizable presets, which let me click a button and go from the perfect sitting height to standing or to a good height for doing videos when I want to rest my elbows on the desk. I purchased this in 2021 and it's held up well. For the last couple of years, I mounted the legs to a butcher block style desktop that I finished myself. It had a really nice industrial look that I really fit my old YouTube set but I decided to change things up for some reasons that I'll get into later. The current desktop is a 3D laminate wrapped desk from iMover. I went with a thicker option and then downsized to a 24 inch by 52 inch, which is totally perfect for my needs. It takes up a lot less space, which helps make the room feel bigger and makes it easier to move my cameras and lights around. I really like the finish on this desk and the rounded edges are super comfortable on my wrists. The designer white color is a really nice, bright, clean looking white, but my only gripe is that they don't offer this version of desktop without the two grommet holes, unless you go with one of their solid wood options. I mounted an industrial colored compact desk drawer from Uplift where I keep a pen light, some progressive locks for when I wanna practice lock picking when I'm bored, and a Flexi Rex my son printed for me. The drawer is well built and just the right size for this desk. When I'm not standing, I'm chillaxing in a Herman Miller Aeron chair with an Atlas suspension headrest. Adobe bought me one for my cubicle at work, and I liked it enough that I picked up the secondhand one for my home office. The mesh is super breathable, and the ergonomics provide good support, which is essential since I ruptured my lowest disc in my back a couple of years ago. I'd love to try the Herman Miller Embody chair to compare it against the Aeron, but they're kind of pricey. Back to the desk setup. My workhorse monitor is a 34 inch LG ultra wide IPS monitor. It provides me plenty of space to have several windows open for when I'm wanting to code in my editor. I could also have multiple files open side by side, which is how I like to work. The monitor is held up by a Loctec monitor arm, which is really sturdy, but is also nice because it helps keep the monitor back, which is important when having a narrower desk. The monitor and several SSD drives for video editing are all connected to a CalDigit TS3 Plus dock that's mounted on the back of the desk, along with all the cables to keep things tidy so I can run a single USB-C cable to my MacBook Pro, and I can also move the desk around easily. My personal MacBook is a 2021 14-inch MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte of storage, which have been terrific for my personal projects and video editing. My main work laptop is a 15-inch MacBook Pro that is several years old, but Adobe recently sent me a new 16-inch MacBook Pro. I just have to finish setting it up. My keyboard is a Logitech MX Keys Mini for Mac that I've owned since it came out. I'm a fan of the Apple Magic Keyboard, but the Logitech lets me easily switch between devices and is slightly softer on the fingers. My go-to mouse is the Apple Magic Mouse. Now, I really wanted to like the MX Master, but that one, the scrolling just wasn't that great on a Mac. And the ergonomics of the Magic Mouse don't really bother me too much because I don't actually rest my palm on the mouse itself. A desk isn't complete without some finishing touches. And fortunately for me, the stars aligned as I was finishing up the remodel on this office. I started looking for a new desk mat and Grove made reach out to me about doing a collaboration. They were kind enough to let me pick out several items that interested me to try out. So I went with a light gray wool desk mat that gives a really nice premium look and breaks up the white desk surface. It took me a couple days to get used to the feel of the wool on my hands, but I hardly notice it now. It also harmonizes with the Grove made maple MacBook dock that's lined with the same gray wool. This dock is super sturdy and helps give my desk a nice minimalistic feel. I love working on my MacBook, but when it comes to taking notes, I'm a sucker for a pen and notebook. It helps me get in touch with my deepest thoughts and tap into my creativity. The best thoughts should be saved in something worth keeping. This leather notebook from Grovemade is nice because it's super easy to remove pages without getting all those torn bits of paper everywhere, and I can even reorder pages to keep my most important thoughts together. Complementing the leather notebook is a finely crafted black metal pen that's probably the nicest pen I've ever owned. It writes well, and it's easy to replace the ink cartridges. In addition to my main desk, I also have this really nice white Herman Miller Everywhere desk, which is perfect for shooting videos or when I'm trying to do some top-down photos for thumbnails, and it's easy for me to move around when I want to work off on my laptop and get a change of scenery. 
When I'm done, it fits inside my closet so I can keep my main room completely open and airy. This maple laptop stand is also from Grovemade. I picked it up for two reasons. I can use it as a laptop stand on this other table, but I also wanted something to hold my iPad Pro when I'm drawing or editing photos. Under the maple stand is another pad from Grove Made. Now, I like the other items they sent me enough that I decided to go ahead and purchase this one myself to try out. It has a nice texture and is backed with cork. It's not reflective, which is super great for when I'm making videos, and the color goes perfectly with my peaceful office vibe. And in fact, I liked that one enough that I ended up purchasing two more larger ones, which I plan to use for backgrounds for top-down photos, and I might give one of them to my wife. I'll leave links to the GrubMade products in the description if you're in the market for some premium desk accessories. Before I reveal my newly remodeled work-from-home office, I want to share the important why behind all of these changes. If you've watched my previous videos, then you've seen my really cool looking Gold Rush office set that I had. I have to admit, it was an awesome looking man cave. I really liked it. I poured my heart into it and the items on that wall represented my personal experiences and my interests. But then something happened when Adobe had us start coming back into the office a couple times a week. The Adobe building I work in is very airy, spacious, light colored, white desks. And despite my anxiety of going back into the office, when I got there, it I just had a peaceful, calming feeling due to the aesthetics of that building. I was ignorant of just how much the darker gray walls and other dark colors in my office and clutter were affecting my mood and well-being. I may dive into that topic more in another video, but the quick lowdown is that I decided to create a mood board of pictures that I thought were peaceful, and then I started working through my office and redecorating things to create a more chill vibe. When I started the renovation, I planned to keep part of the Gold Rush wall, but after enjoying the positive effects I was feeling from the redecorated part of the room, I finally caved and replaced the Gold Rush wall with these acoustic panels that I hide behind these light colored curtains that help make up for all the sound absorption that I got rid of during the remodel. The new space is much less cluttered and feels very open. I positioned my desk to look into the room, which helps a ton. And if I wasn't making videos, things would be even more minimal, but I kind of had to get creative here. And so inside of the baskets and the corner shelf and some of the closet shelves are sound absorbing materials. The overall sound in the room when recording isn't quite as good as it used to be but the overall trade-off is worth it considering how much time I spend in this room. I also simplified my recording setup and sold off a ton of equipment and camera switchers and went to a simple rolling light stand setup that I can easily move around and that doesn't take up much space. When I need to recuperate, I now have a nice place to sit back and read or think. Maybe it's a little too good because my wife now wants the rest of the house to look like my office. When creating a productivity workspace, don't underestimate the effects of room aesthetics and color on your mental well-being. I wish I had learned that earlier. And if you want to see more about my previous setup, you can check out this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Lates.